Hello there, and welcome back to my painting channel. And today I'm going to be painting a Blood Bowl Beast Man. I'm gonna paint him up in a yellow uh, sort of color scheme. Yellow tends to be quite a bit of a bugbear for a lot of people, so hopefully, hopefully we can paint him up in a nice easy yellow that'll make it um, that'll make it quite simple for people. So here's our Beast Man. I'm going to start off with his skin colour, which is, for today, going to be a Beastie Brown from Vallejo. And pretty much I've thinned his paint and I'm just going to cover all of the skin and all of the fur in the same colour as well. This is going to be quite a simple, easy little, um, easy little paint job, easy little character. This is going to be quite a quick one today. Just want to make sure that you cover all of the skin areas, all of the fur, avoid the shorts and the armor and things like that. And there you go, once all of the skin colors and all of the brown is done. I'm going to move on to painting the leather straps. And for the leather straps, it's up to you. You've got a choice of two different colors here. If you're a Citadel user, then you can use a Dryad Bark as a nice dark tone. Uh, if not, and you're a Vallejo user, uh, like myself, this is what I'm using here, is a Dark Rust, which is a number 302. Um, and this is just a base tone, this is, this is just a separate, like, we're painting quite a few browns on this character, so we want the browns to be completely different in their tones. So the Beastie Brown is going to be quite light. Um, the brown on the leathers and the gloves and things then is going to be quite dark so that it, it separates these browns it makes them stand off each other we don't want to paint them all a similar sort of tone of brown and then end up with just a a, a mush of brown on on top of uh, um, on top of our miniature uh, so yeah just go around do all of the leathers be careful with the straps not to go onto the, the skin tones or anything like that if you do then um, it's easy enough to fix you could just go back to the beastie brown and touch up what you've missed and things like that so once we've done our leather points and our straps I'm just going to move on and hit the sort of creamy areas the white areas now for this i'm using a vallejo bone white and i've managed to somehow paint his ears while I'm doing his horns as well by mistake but again you can go back and cover those back over in the beastly brown when you're ready and try to take your time and be as careful as possible don't forget the little plaster across his nose just here and of course things like his hooves and things like that would also be um, like a white tone or a cream tone. I tend to use the uh, the bone white for a lot of base tones when I'm painting sort of light colours and whites. Um, because it's an off white, it's a cream. It means that when you put your shade or uh, your shade or your um, wash into it, it seeps into those cracks, and then you're able to build the colour back up later. Now for the yellow, um, there's a, a sort of an easy or a cheating yellow. And Citadel do an amazing yellow called Avalanche Sunset. Now this yellow is a, a really, really good base tone yellow. And the reason for that is because this, this, this yellow doesn't require you to put so many layers on to get a really nice even colour. So for the yellows on this, we're going to start with the Avalanche Sunset. I'm going to put this across all of the armour, but we're also going to put this across the shorts as well. Just take your time with this, just make sure that you don't hit any of the skin or anything like that. But as I say, when you see just how well this yellow sticks to a, a model or a miniature, um, you'll fall in love with using this yellow, because it's a great base tone to then build colours up from as well, which I'll show you in a little bit. It's almost like a cheating yellow, which is what I like about it. A lot of yellows tend to take a lot of tones, a lot of layers to get the colour to come through. Whereas, as you can see with the first layer here, this is standing off quite, quite strongly already. And there you go. Once we're at this stage, we're just going to want to catch our silver points or little metal points so there's a ring and there's a belt buckle and things like that and for these i'm using an army painter plate mail metal this is my preferred metallic paint i i absolutely love the army painter plate mail metal 
but when it comes to the metals, this is entirely a personal choice thing. So, again, if you're a Citadel user, you could use something like Lead Belcher, that would do equally as fine. Um, it's just my personal choice is to use the Army Painter. So take your time, try not to get any of the silver onto the dark browns. Um, if you do, again, you can go back and just tidy that up and neaten that up. So don't worry too much if you make mistakes. Making mistakes is part of painting. So once we've got all of our base colours in, that's pretty much the base tones of the miniature up here. So we're just going to cover this now in a layer of Army Painter Soft Tone. And Soft Tone is a really, really good shade um, or wash or whatever word you want to use to describe it because this um, sits in the recesses, this tones your miniature, it shows off all of the darker areas but without darkening the miniature down too much. So you get a lot of the depth, a lot of the detail in the miniature, but without darkening it and making the miniature really, really hard to work with. So soft tone is a really good choice on this one. You can cover the yellow in the soft tone as well. That's the beauty with this sort of, um, this wash, is that because it's not too aggressive, it's not too dark, um, and with yellow being sort of like uh, the color that it is, especially the avalanche sunset, it means it, it ties the miniature together in a really, really nice way. The only thing you want to try to avoid is pooling too much. So I'm putting quite a lot of um, soft tone on my miniature, but that's because I'm going to manipulate it as well. So you want to try to make sure that it doesn't pool too much in certain areas and things like that. So once you see it sticking too much in one area use your brush and just pull that to one side so that it doesn't um it doesn't go too thick then but like i say this is a very forgiving sort of wash or tone um it dries to a fantastic finish um as you'll see here and I mean, if you just wanted a quick paint job just to get them on the table, you could end and stop here. And that's good enough for tabletop quality if you wanted to just have something that looks nice without being too um, uh, too complicated. But of course, we're going to move on and take it a little bit further. So from there, we're going to start back with the skin. So we're going to bring those tones back up. I'm going to start with the beastie brown again. So that's the original skin tone. And with this being thinned down as well, just going to want to take your time and repaint without going too far to the edges so you're just building that color building that that, that lightness back up so what you'll see is i'm just leaving areas where the shade is set just almost like um kind of like as if you're sketching when you, you you sort of sit down and you're doing a little bit of drawing or things you're going to try to leave certain areas so what i'm doing is i'm painting on the raised edges but leaving the recessed points as dark as possible you see that just on the face here where I'm touching this beastie brown back up because we've already got a darker layer just below. This is the fun part of painting. Once this is thinned, it almost looks like there's not enough paint going on to your miniature on times. Uh, but once this dries, because it's a thinned down paint, the texture that you get between uh, the darker recessed points and the areas that you paint in is so rewarding. Um, that it, it becomes a really, uh, a really sort of like, like I say, a rewarding thing. So when you finish painting, it, it gives you a sense of pride to look back at the miniature to see the sort of tones that you've been able to get out of it. And you can see here just on the face, what I'm doing is just picking out the very, very, very raised points. Because the original colour is the same as the colour that we're using to highlight, um, when it dries, you get that sort of um, tone between light and dark. You see just on the muscle and just across the arms as well. Just here, just avoiding the fur this time around. So what we're doing when we're painting all of this is we're just trying to paint up all of the uh, all of the muscle points, all of the tones, um, but we're avoiding the fur because the fur we're going to do uh, a different colour anyway. Because again, like I was saying about the browns, we don't want them all to be the same brown. We want to try to um, want to try to make them a little bit different. So yeah, you see, we're just building those layers nice and slowly, in little bits. Nice thin coat, uh, nice thin, thin layer of paint, and it'll dry to a really nice standard. Now, if you want to take it further, this is purely optional. Um, I like to take it a little bit further again. Um, and the easiest way I find to do that is to use the original color while it's still wet on your palette. 
and just add a blob, just a quick squirt of uh, Vallejo bone white, just a little dropper of the, uh, the, the cream tone that we used for the horns. Um, and just add that into it because that will lighten the color, the original color. So we then have a dark, a middle and a highlight all out of the same color. And as you see with this now, because I want to try and mimic a sort of semblance of him being a little bit furry and things like that, I'm not being overly careful with my lines. So I'm creating almost like brush strokes to kind of give the um, skin tone here a little bit more of a, a, a texture or a layer to it so that it's not too flat and the colors not too flat I'm just trying to create a little bit more of like an aggressive edge so that he looks and still looks a little bit furry and he's still got a little bit of a fluffy coat to him as well even though he's not covered in fur he technically is quite a furry character And again, you'll see just picking out the very, very, very tips now of the raised areas with this because this is almost like the highlight coat. So this is the very edge highlight where we want that depth to show through, as I say, a dark, a middle, and then a highlight as well. But we use the same color tone for this. The only difference is we've gone the main color, then down with the shade, then back to the main color, and then back up with a, uh, with a blended tone of, of that bone white as well. And with the shoulders, um, again, stick into those lines and leave in some of the original sort of mid-tone showing through. If you leave some of the lines, it creates a element of muscle and um, a little bit more depth to the model, a little bit more character to it as well. Um, so yeah, you can play about with those sorts of things. And from there, we're going to go back to the bone. Uh, sorry, we're going to go back to the to the yellow. So we're going back to the citadel, back to the Avalanche sunset. Now, because we've put the tone on top with this um, army painter, what you want to do with this one? This one's probably going to take about two or three coats now to get the yellow to show through. Um, but just take your time with this. Wait for each layer to dry very, very carefully because if you put this on top and the layer below isn't dry enough, what you'll find is the layer below may peel and then you'll end up back at square one. But the difference is you'll end up with bumps and kinks and things like that in the, uh, in the paint. And we don't want that. We want it to be a nice smooth coat. So with a nice thin layer, put this on, give it a good bit of time to dry, then go back and paint on top again and then for a third time as well. Uh, you may not have to do that with the shorts. I didn't have to with the shorts on this particular character. Um, I just followed along the lines and tried to create a little bit of um, depth with where the shade had sat in the recess points. Um, and you can see there's a few lines there where the shade has sat which you can just manipulate and play about with to create that sort of shadow and that kind of uh, movement within the character as well. You can just see across the back of his shorts there, there's at least two lines going across that if you paint those and leave the shaded area then it creates that depth as well which is great. The good thing with this yellow is you can paint it in a single layer and because it doesn't cover too much of the miniature, because it doesn't, uh, that the layers are quite thin, what you end up with is the underneath um, shaded area does still hold an element of shade so you do still get that depth and that tone without needing to put multiple layers on once you go over it once it does give you that kind of um, that kind of depth as well so for the armor points to make those stand out a little bit, again, just to give a little bit more of a tone and texture from the uh, putting everything at the same color. For this one, we're gonna move up a yellow and we're gonna highlight this one. So we're gonna use a highlight in yellow on top of the yellow we've already done. And for this, I'm using a gold yellow from Vallejo. Uh, and it's personal choice which way you want to go and, and which yellows you'd like. Um, and again, for this, you wanna give this about two or three coats, but also, very very important to let each coat dry down don't 
um, build up too much um, while the coats are still wet because you might pull some of this paint off and yellow can be a little bit of a nightmare on times for that. So just give yourself some time, paint a layer, leave it dry, go back, paint another, and leave it dry and things like that. But we're just sticking to only the armor points for this. Um, we're gonna leave his shorts exactly as they are. Um, you could edge highlight them if you like. I'm not a massive fan of edge highlighting. Um, but again, personal choice. If you want to do it, it's your miniature, you go for it. And here we go. I'm just following the, the pattern, just following the lines down on the armor point. Trying to keep the armor as, as uniformed as possible. Um, and to give a little bit more character as well and, and things like that to, to how it, it looks. I'm going to try to avoid those rivets as much as possible because where the shade is just sat in those points that's creating a nice amount of depth you know that's, that's giving a, a real nice tone to the, the light to dark on the, uh, the the contrast on these greaves on, on the armor points on his arms so um, yeah So once we're at that stage, you're going to want to just move up now and we're going to highlight the leather points. Now for the leather points, for this one I'm using a Vallejo Mahogany Brown. Um, but again, if you're a Citadel painter, uh, another option, something that I, I have used in the past and I do like using a lot, is the Citadel's Doomble Brown. When watered down and put on top of this dark layer, it creates a really nice uh, sort of reddy brown tone, so it creates a nice sort of leathery effect. Um, so yeah, personal choice on those ones, whichever paint company you use. Um, like I say, for this one I'm using the, the mahogany brown and I'm just trying to follow the lines but without covering it too much so that it leaves a little bit of the darkness as well. And then we're going to move on to the bone white, so we're just going to highlight the horns. Now for the horns, um, what I'm going to tend to do is just bring some lines down and around the horns, creating those um, uh, sort of, uh, you, you can see where the shade has, has sat, so I'm kind of painting around just to create um, a little bit of a, a texture then, so it looks like the horns are a little bit rounded, and we're going to go over this with a highlight again as well, and you'll see kind of how that effect works, it's a very simple easy way to do horns, I know that some people do horns by just using shades and things like that, and you can do that, that's fine, you know, it's completely up to you. Um, but I'll show you a different way. So then we're going to dry brush the um, the fur. And dry brush in the fur, like I always say with dry brushing, is always make sure that you do a very, very, very light layer and build up. Don't go too extreme. And for this, we're using a Vallejo beige brown. So this is a slightly lighter tone to the colours that we've been using on the skin. And again, that will make the fur pop a little bit and give a contrast between the skin to the fur tones and just be very careful I'm using a very small dry brush here just so that I don't go over the tones and the colors that I've already painted and this is just about building slowly 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 building um, take your time don't rush the dry brush because you don't have dry brush on but the layers you've already painted um, and just create that level of depth then you can go as extreme or as little as you like And there we go. So, like I said, with the horns, we're going to add a highlight. And the highlight that we're going to add, this is going to give those uh, the idea of those horns being rounded. As you see, I'm now going into a thinner brush. I'm just using a few different lines, but I'm trying my best to leave um, some of the layer be behind, some of the um, trying to leave the bone white, the cream, and the brown underneath, so that that gives that element of these these ridges, these lines going around the horns, you see? Just like that. Just like so. And again, you could build this up in multiple layers should you want and things like that. You can go as extreme as you like. It's completely up to you. So going back to the really, really, really dark parts, so the bits that we used to do, the leathers and things like that, 
Um, I'm just going to add a few random patterns here. And this is just to give an element that these shoulder pads are actually metal. And what we're going to do is we're going to use this as a base tone to put some silver back over the top to create chips and worn down effect on the leather as if this particular Blood Bowl uh, player has been in the wars, he's had a few battles, the paint is chipping off the shoulder pads, you know this beast man has really got stuck in and had a good fight, had a good rumble. Um, so the way to do that is just to, to give and, and create just a few sort of random patterns. Um, you can go in as far into the armour or as little as you like. You can weather as extreme as you like. Some people just like to use this just across the edges. And I'm trying to be a little bit more extreme here just to give you an idea so that when it comes to you painting on yours, you can see just how it's done um, or, or just how the effect has, has been gained. You don't have to be anywhere near um, precise or exact with this the good thing with doing sort of weathering and chips and things like that is you can be as rough as possible because um, there is no pattern to it I mean if you batter a bit of metal and the paint comes off the paint doesn't come off in any specific way it is quite random so you can be as random as you like you can be as precise as you like but there's no need to sit down and really think about being I've got to do it in a certain way, it's fine. You build up your pattern however you like. And as I say, they're your miniatures, you paint them how you want, you know? So once the dark layer is dry, you just tap in some silver back across the layer that we've just done. And that's just going to create the fact or create an effect that the, the, the paint itself has been broken, the paint itself has been chipped and then the silver is showing through underneath. Now again, like I say, I've, I've gone quite far into the into the shoulder pad, but you don't need to go that far. You could just use it on the very edges and on the tips if you wanted to just show that it's just the edges that have taken a, a bit of scuff in or, or things like that. Being a Chaos character, you'd expect this guy to have been in a few battles anyway. So he's not going to be like an elf or anything where his armour is really pristine and pretty. You want this guy to be battered, you want this guy to show off. Look at how look how tough this guy is, look at how much fight in this, this beast man has been involved in. So, like I say, weathering you can be as extreme or as light as you like. But I'm showing you in a bit more of an extreme fashion here, just to give you an idea as to what this kind of effect can look like on your miniature. Um, it's, it's such a high high reward for minimal effort because it takes almost nothing to do but when you look back at your miniature later it looks absolutely incredible. It does look really really good and battered and again now our armour although it's yellow like the shorts is a completely different uh, tone and texture and it stands out away from the short so that gives us a really good contrast in our miniature even though we've used practically the same colors here we go just hitting the edges just hitting some of the points just trying my best to uh, to build up some of the uh, some of the chips and things like that. Like I say, you don't have to follow exactly what, what I'm doing. It's more just a guidelines and an idea as to this is how you can weather um, your chips and things like that. And there he is, all painted up. The good thing with those chips is if you do them a little bit wrong, you can always paint back over them with the yellow anyway, so you're not gonna lose out or, or anything like that. And that's him all painted. The only other thing I've added, which I haven't shown you, is I painted his nose black. Other than that, uh, this is him all painted up and ready for the battlefield, ready for Blood Bowl, he's ready for the Blood God, um, he's ready to, uh, ready for a scuffle. So as always my friends, thank you very very much for watching, I really hope that this was useful and I hope you enjoy, take care.